You know, the first time I ever went to a circus, I was six years old. My mother took my brother and I to Greenville Memorial Auditorium. It smelled of stale popcorn. We had great seats. And we watched Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, the greatest show on earth. How many of you have ever seen or ever attended Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus? It truly is an amazing show. Now from there, I experienced some other circuses in my life and Lisa and I have been out to Las Vegas several times. We've seen Cirque du Soleil. You ever seen Cirque du Soleil? Amazing circus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Circuses are cool. That's why we're doing this adventure week called The Greatest Show. Wow, look at this. Don't you love these stickers? The Greatest Show. Did you see the movie The Showman? Anyone see that? That was great, that was great. I really like that, I really like that too, but there's, there's nothing like the circus. I remember the tightrope artists. I remember the contortionists. I remember the clowns. I remember the elephants. I remember the tigers. I remember all sorts of things when I first experienced the circus. Circus. You know, since we're just having a conversation, I thought I'd ask you a question. Would you describe your life as a circus? I mean, it's just you and me talking. I mean, it's just like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But would, would, would you say, you know, my, my life, Ed, is a circus. <laughs> it's so crazy, people would pay tickets to see it. <laughs> Maybe you're like, yeah, my life is a circus. My family is a circus. I understand that. There's a ringmaster and everyone and the three rings. And I remember again watching Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, the greatest show on earth. The ringmaster, he would have everything synchronized and he would pace everything perfectly and ring one and ring two and ring three. Whoa, you know. Maybe you're involved in a family circus. I mean, after all, all of us are members of a family. Ring one, you've got the marriage. How's that, how's that working? I don't know, I'm just asking. Ring two, you've got the family, the kids and all that, and ring three, your career, what you do for a living. I would argue, I mean, I'm not an attorney, but to throw in like one of the favorite words attorneys use, I would argue the family is a circus. <laughs> Some of you are laughing. You're like going, wow, I, I am a tightrope artist right now. I'm trying to balance life's demands. I'm a single parent, Ed, and you have no idea. I don't, but I'm just suggesting that maybe you're in a circus. Others are like, no, I'm a clown. I am a clown. If you saw my life, you would just laugh. Isn't that funny? I'm a contortionist. I'm a trapeze artist going from one thing to the next thing. And if you saw my schedule for the next couple of weeks, we start school. <laughs> These extracurricular activities is unbelievable. My life's a circus. It is. I'm a grandparent, and I'm keeping the grandkids, and I'm trying to do this, and starting a business over there. My life is a circus. That's true, isn't it? Let's just be honest. Life is a circus, and when you talk about the family, it's it's a circus. Jesus, I would argue, is the ultimate ringmaster 
He's our righteous ringmaster. I know he wants to be. And he has an amazing agenda for the family. I'm, I'm talking about the Son of God. I'm talking about, you know, the Lord. I'm talking about the whole tenor and tone of Scripture. God desires for the family circus, your family circus and mine, to hit on all cylinders, to be synchronized supernaturally, to be paced perfectly. Jesus is wired. He, 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 is, he is the one who needs to hold the microphone, to wear the top hat and the red blazer, and to, to run the show. So he has the best in store for every single family here. I love to kind of play mind games with myself, and I want you to play a mind game. Have you ever, have you ever just kind of thought about, what if your family was just like almost perfect? Let's, let's just play that game. Okay, just think about your family for a second. Okay. What if it was just this utopic vibe? Everything was hitting on all cylinders, and, and Jesus was the ringmaster, and, and act one, act two, act three, you got the marriage and the kids and the career, and God as the audience. Whoa! It was perfect. I mean, nearly perfect. You know, okay, close to being perfect. But let's just think about that. Have you ever thought about that before? I have. Have you ever thought about, too, like, what if we lived in a perfect environment? Let me do a kind of sidebar thing. What if we didn't pay any taxes, but we made the politicians pay all the taxes? That would be like the ultimate, wouldn't it? What if I could do one push-up and look like the rock? <laughs> the ultimate, you know? What if, what if Fruit Loops like made you ripped? <laughs> what if every fish was a 10-pound bass? What if every time I played golf, I, I birdied every hole? <laughs> this, this utopic culture. Oh. oh, the utopic family, this family that's so amazing. Again, we're just playing games, right? Man, have you seen the marriage? It's almost perfect in this family circus. You've got husbands loving their wives as Christ loved the church. That's what the Bible says we're to do, and that's what the ringmaster desires. The husband is loving his wife selflessly and sacrificially and steadfastly. I did that alliteration for all the preachers who were here. See, only four or five people laughed, and that's about how many preachers we have. No one else got that joke. And you know, when you're at my age, 57, many times I'll do jokes just for one person. I don't really care if you laugh or not. But those who understand preaching were on the ground. That was hilarious to preachers. Don't worry, I'll have a joke for you too. Just, 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 just stay with me, hopefully, hopefully. Do I have something on my face? I thought I did. Oh, okay, Here, my, my, my beautiful wife's in the front row and I saw her do like this. I didn't know if I had something, because sometimes, you know, yeah, yeah, it was your face. Ooh. <laughs> Paranoia, the big destroyer. Anyway. <laughs> I was talking about the ultimate family. What if, wives, think about it, your husbands were nearly perfect. What if they loved you, romanced you, took you out on dates at least once a week? What if they volunteered to rub your back every night, to cuddle you? That was funny. What if <laughs> they were sensitive? What if they understood. Would that, be, would that be amazing? And guys, how about your wives? What if, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but what if the kids, I mean, our kids were like, mom, dad, thank you so much 
for bringing me into the world. You're absolutely amazing. And this is the greatest show on earth. Thank you for this family circus. Thank you for providing. I'll take out the trash. I'll make up the bed. I'll keep the house clean. Man, my parents are amazing. Unbelievable. Wouldn't that be crazy? I'm, I'm serious, Ser seriously. If, if, if our families were that way. I mean, ultimately, we read the scriptural record. I mean, that's what God desires. I mean, he knows that we mess up and we're not perfect, but that's what he would like, a nearly perfect family, a nearly perfect family circus. Well, the family should be that entity where the transcendent values are caught and taught and lived out. The family. That's it. But God did not want to leave the family alone. God didn't say, okay, it's just the family. That's it. No, he's created other spheres of influence in our culture. And it's his desire, again, we're talking a utopia existence here, utopia, is that the word utopic, utopian, utopian? Utopian, thank you, honey. Utopian existence. You got the family, and you got these spheres supporting and understanding and championing the values from God lived out in the family. In other words, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Now, when you see the highlighted word, I want you to say it with me real loud, okay? Let's read together Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Here's what Jesus said, but seek there you go, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. That's God's agenda. That's his plan. You've heard it before, first things first, seek first, seek first the kingdom, the sovereign rule and reign of God. God's in charge, he's God, I'm not. God, here's the microphone, Jesus, you take it, you run the show, you're the ringmaster. I am the act. God is the audience. But see, in culture, God has created some other things that he wants to, to support, that he, he desires to uplift and, and champion what he's given the family to do. And I thought, because we're talking about the ultimate environment, I would just talk about some of these things real quick. The first one would be uh, yeah, government. Wouldn't it be stunning if all of the people we elected, all of the men and the women, they understood God's character. They understood the family. They understood how important their jobs are to underscore and highlight those transcendent values that should be lived out in the family, wouldn't that, be, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be amazing? If our government, every law, every decision was made that way, that would be crazy, would it not? Okay, isn't this a fun exercise? I hope you're having fun, I am, I love this. Okay, the next one is education. Now we have some Phenomenal teachers, principals, even administrators, and a few presidents of colleges here at Fellowship and at all of our different campuses. Let's give them a round of applause, man. What if, though, in this perfect environment, I'm just talking about a crazy environment, every teacher, every coach, every, pro, every counselor, they were like, man, we have an amazing opportunity. And the math teachers were like, math comes from God. It really does. Uh, history is about God and science is about God and activity. I mean, God's given us the ability for these activities. I mean, that, that would truly be off the chain, wouldn't it? Ridiculous. And they, and they were all about supporting the family, not taking away, not detracting. No, 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 supporting. Well, another one, 
music. I'll do another little. Thank you. Music. What if the musicians were like, wow, music comes from God. Now, some of you are thinking right now, you're going, are you talking about Christian music? There's no such thing as Christian music. Just to turn to your neighbor here, even down in Miami and Northport and in Prosperous Line, I just say, I didn't know it, but there's no such thing as Christian music. Just say that. Turn it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a shocker for some people. Let me let me illustrate. Okay, here, here's like a little a little thing I want to do. And tell me, is this Christian or not? <laughs> How many people think that was Christian? How many people think that was secular? No one knows. There's no such thing as Christian music, but there's such thing as Christian lyrics. What if all of the country music and even the new country, oh man, we're going to support the family. What if... What if la, 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 la. all those aging rockers who now can just like do like that? I mean, now, you ever seen these old guys? God bless Mick Jagger. They barely can make it, but they're still trying. They're trying, aren't they? They just don't look right anymore. You can't, you can't do it. Once you, once you get past 90, stop. So, what if? What if all these people, I'm talking about Post Malone, I'm talking about Jay-Z, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Beyonce, I'm, 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 I'm talking about whoever, uh, you two. What if they were like, wow, I'm going to glorify God in everything I do. Lyrics, it's going to support the family. And then, I don't want to take too much of your time, we're just having this conversation together. Uh, technology. Whoa. Technology freaks me out. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm just blown away by it. The internet, or as my 82-year-old dad calls it, the internet. It's, how do you find that, dad? W, W, as I said, W dot, anyway. So, a little joke for those who know dad. Um, no one else laughed, that's okay. You have to know dad to really get that joke. But we do a lot of cramativity around here. Fellowship Church, I, I think, it, I just want to applaud our team and volunteers. The creativity here is, is truly amazing. But when you have people who are creative, you also have people, you, you know, you've got to have cramativity. In other words, we will cram right before we have to hit the stage, or even with this amazing thing we're doing, Adventure Week, the greatest show, the greatest showman. I mean, we have been working, 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 spent untold hours, resources, manpower, but we're gonna be, you know, cramming right before we walk out. Well, right before I walked out, and I put about 20 hours already of study before I did this message, which I normally do. And I'm not saying that to impress you, but I have to do that. 20 hours of study, but even 30 minutes before walking out, I mean, we're online with stats and themes and we're feeding each other information. I'm like, technology. I mean, what if when we post this stuff on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, vlogged or whatever is popular, I mean, what if we were always thinking, Matthew 6.33, Matthew 6.33, I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God, the rule and the reign and the sovereignty of God. That, that would, man, that, that, would be, that would be something else. Then, government, education, music, technology. Oh, I've got one. Sports. <laughs> sports. Whoa, we love our sports. What if all of the coaches, all of the people that run 
the soccer leagues and the peewee football leagues and little league and AAU this and AAU that and club cheer and gymnastics. What if they all said, whoa, we are going to schedule stuff around the priority of the family. Our schedules are not going to encroach upon the family or upon the involvement of the church in the family. No! That, that'd be something. And then there's another one, a little something, and this is kind of outdated, but let me, let me, let me write it, okay? Okay, 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 okay. It's still big. I know some of the young people have never heard of it. <laughs> TV. Hmm. We still spend a lot of time watching TV. What if the power brokers, the big dogs who own all of the networks and stuff, what if they got together and they said, we're going to make this about the family, about carrying in a creative way the culture of Christ-like character to the world. Oh, just, just to stop, again, again, just let it, let it settle, just, just, just let it marinate, turn it over on the rotisserie grill of your mind for a second. That's, that's the ultimate. Well, I forgot to, I forgot one more, I did, I forgot it, forgot it. You remember back in school, you know that guy or that girl that usually sat on the front row, they would always correct their teacher's mistakes? Ah, uh, excuse me. Yes, Susan. You forgot to assign homework, you know. Ah, uh, excuse me, you misspell that word. That's funny. Church. Now, obviously the church underscores and highlights those transcendent values taught and caught from the Lord himself. The church, the body of Christ. The church, the family of God. We understand our concept of family. A little theology here from just scripture. We're born spiritual orphans. We make a faith decision. We're adopted into the family of God. We're born again. Then you have the church, the church being the bride of Christ, Jesus being the bridegroom. You have connectivity, you have intimacy, you have reproduction, you have the family of God. So that's where we get our concept of family. I'm talking about the family circus. I'm talking about Jesus being the pace setter, the ringmaster. I'm talking about ring one being the marriage, ring two being the kids, ring three being, being your, your mission, your calling, your job, and God being the audience. Well, let's now just put the cards on the table. Let's just keep it real for the moms, right? That's what we say. Let's look, and let's just, again, we're having a conversation. It's just you and me. Let's see if these things, these entities, these spheres, are actually supporting and highlighting those transcendent values. Uh, again, we're just, we're just thinking. The government. There's some great people in the government. We have over the next year some amazing people, powerful people in the government who'll be on this stage. They'll pack the place out, overflow. Are you believing he's, and, and we had them scheduled, he's coming, she'll be at fellowship. There's some amazing people in the government. But overall, generally speaking, the government a lot of corruptions in the government. It's the corrupt calling the corrupt corrupt. 
The investigators are investigating the investigators while they investigate the investigation. And the government, not to get too political, <laughs> they're gonna protect developing eggs in sea turtles, but yet millions and millions of developing babies are killed every year. There's a lot of hypocrisy, a lot of chicanery. I mean, it's interesting when you think about our government, and I'm, and I'm all about you know, being a United States citizen, but when the government takes over something, they usually screw it up. Now, they do a great job with roads and you know, military, which, I mean, that's like, I'm into the small government thing. But government? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'd say they have done a great job or doing a great job right now of what I'm talking about. That's just me. Again, I'm having a conversation. You can, that's between you and God. I'm just, again, suggesting this. Are you feeling me? You shake your head. It's, it's good, it's good, it's good. Just take a deep breath. This is kind of an industrial strength message. That's fine, that's fine. How about education? I'm all about education. I, as I've said, I'm so happy that many parents go, we're gonna homeschool. I'm so happy that many parents like, we're gonna send our kids to a Christian school. I'm so happy that many parents are involved in the secular, you know, school stuff. We have great teachers, great leaders, great principals here, awesome. But let's look at education. I mean, go back. We dropkick God in the Bible and prayer out of the public schools even read the secular research from Dr. Weirdbeard and Professor Martha Marxist. And they'll say, wow, something has happened in our culture. Something is messed up. Something's out of whack. When you kick God out, in other words, let me say it this way. When Jesus is not your ringmaster, you have a form of insanity. Think about some of these smart people. How could they be so crazy? They have a white knuckle grip on the microphone. They are running their life. We're not designed to run the show. Every time I've tried to run the show in my life, I end up going down the rabbit hole. Education. I mean, the focus is not on truth. It's relativism. Education tells us we're just spawning salmon. We're just dogs in heat. We're just Animals, what is, what is truth? And then we send our kids off to college and we allow them to sit at the feet of people who have no concept or reverence of God, scripture, character, values. I don't know. I mean, are we really supporting the family? Music, I love music. And don't leave here and say, Ed said all secular music is of the devil. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. There, there's some great things going on in all of these spheres. I just want you to think with me, okay? Just, just, just think, just think, just think, just think, just think. Music, take rock, Country, hip hop, rap. I've studied this stuff and I like this stuff. For, this is gonna date me, for four decades I've been speaking on this topic. The major themes sex, you know that. Violence, you know that. Rebellion, disillusionment, depression. 
Those are the five major themes of the music I just mentioned. And you have artists, I mean, the, the themes are the same. You just change the name. You know, now it's Drake, it's Post Malone, who went to our student ministry for a while. Demi Lovato, who also went to our student ministry for a while. Drake, he didn't go to the student ministry. <laughs> Jay-Z, no. Beyonce, no, they didn't. Very talented. What are they talking about? I mean, all you have to do is just read the lyrics, man. And I love the beat. I love the, I, I mean, that's great. What are you putting into your brain all the time? Hey, 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 mom, dad, are you allowing your kids to, to OD on that stuff? Because garbage in, garbage out. I love my favorite candy bar is Kit Kat. I, 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 I love Kit Kat. Okay, how many people in here, Kit Kat's your favorite candy? It, 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 I, there's something about the Kit Kat. I don't know what it is. So what if I ate one Kit Kat a month? That's cool. I wouldn't really, it wouldn't really change the way I look. What if though I ate 500 <laughs> Kit Kat bars a day? <laughs> well, it, it, horrible. What are you putting in to your mind? What are you putting in to your body? See, the enemy, I'm talking about Satan, and it does not take someone who, with a genius IQ to understand and believe there's a personal sinister force who's wreaking havoc in our world today. But, but, but if I'm Satan, and this is about Satan, I'm not gonna go, hey, check out my shiny suit. I pitched for it, got a goatee. Some cool ink right here. <laughs> I'm going to get you. I'm coming for you, baby. No. The Bible calls him the prince of the power of the air. Music. He was the worship leader in heaven before he was kicked out. Airwaves, the air. Think about it. So this wretched ringmaster is going to be covert, sly. He'll just say, "Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I take the mic? Just tell Jesus it's going to give it to me. I, I, I want just, just, just a little bit. Just, just, just a." Just a, just a little decision, a little, a little, a little micro decision. A little, don't, it's not going to affect you, I'm telling you. Seriously, it's not, it's not, it's not going to mess with you. And then all of a sudden, he's got it. He's setting the pace. He's calling the shots. In ring one, this is what Jesus said, we have the lust of the flesh. Ring two, the lust of the eyes. Ring three, the pride of life. And man, it can be disastrous. And it is disastrous. So there's a whole nother circus going on out there that we have no idea is happening and it's led by this wretched ringmaster. And we park ourselves in front of technology we go to these schools and we're governed and then we listen to all of this with the themes and, I mean, the television shows. Number one show was Game of Thrones. You know what goes on there. That's the, you know, the, the thing right now. Well, I even went old school. Seinfeld, I think Jerry Seinfeld's hilarious. Really funny. Been to see him in concert. 
But then I looked at the themes of his show over like a six month period. Masturbation, orgasm, premarital sex, homosexuality, rebellion. Great job. Wow. It's pretty awesome. Have you seen what some of these power brokers in Hollywood, have you seen how they live, how they act, what they do, what you have to do to become popular? And, and, and I've had, over the years, dozens of conversations with sharp families who've sat right where you're sitting and they've told me after the service, hey Ed, we're going to Hollywood. Man, little Susie, oh, she's beautiful. She can sing and act and we're gonna reverse the course in Hollywood. Oh, see Tim? Oh man, he can act. He, he's, really, he's really, he's like the best actor in his local high school, and man, he's handsome, and we're going out to Hollywood and chasing that dream, baby. Because you gotta say baby if you're talking about Hollywood. Sadly, the people I know who've done that crawl into the rabbit hole. They don't come out. I'm not saying it's impossible. Technology. Let's talk about that. The masters of the universe. How could you have a group of people so brilliant and so stupid at the same time? Mark Zuckerberg, brilliantly stupid and stupidly brilliant. It's okay to laugh, it's true, they're not believers. Musk, Bezos, there's censorship throughout the internet, throughout Facebook, throughout Twitter, throughout Instagram, they censor the things of God. I have studied it. I've been a part of it. I've seen the algorithms. I know. Recently, YouTube made a guy take off a video because he said there was hate speech about Islam, yet YouTube has thousands of videos that blaspheme the name of Jesus. Hey, come on and give me a clap. If that's all you can do, go to a golf tournament. Man, you're clapping better than that when the Cowboys kick a field goal. And that's another thing I wanna talk about next, sports. We worship. I mean, white, tight guys, white guys, most have no rhythm. We just don't. Show up. We kind of talk like this, a white guy here, especially in Texas, they don't open their mouth very much. Show up, sit there like a knot on a log at Fellowship Church, walk in to Jerry World, they're going buck wild. <gasps> Dressing like the cowboys and, and wearing the jerseys. And, and I'm like going, great worship, wrong object. What if Martians, what if Martians landed in our culture today during football season and looked around? These people are freaks. They're worshiping an oblong ball 
with steroid-driven, overweight men going back and forth on a, it looks like a green pasture with white lines. <laughs> and they're paying a lot of money for overpriced junk food, sitting in uncomfortable seats. I'm just, I'm just, I, I love sports. I play college basketball. I've been there, I understand, I got it, I got it. I, I love the Cowboys. I'm not hating on the Cowboys. And here's what's so funny about, we have a few preachers here. This is so funny, it's a preacher's joke. How many times, YJC and Clark, have you guys been speaking and someone will take just one sentence totally out of context, am I lying? And leave, yeah, Ed said he didn't like Cowboys, I'm not going back for all that person. He also got on Jay-Z. And yeah, it was so freaky. Some of you are thinking about your defense when I talk about Jay-Z talking about raping women, you would defend him more so than me. You would defend him more so than the Word of God. And that's jacked up. And I know, because I've been doing this for a long time, Jay-Z needs the Lord. And I've got to wonder about some of these millennial pastors, all these pictures with all these celebrities. Can we just talk now? Who's converting who? I'm all about reaching the unreached. But you can't play in their circus too long because you'll be down that rabbit hole. So sports, and we've got all of these. See, see the devil is so brilliant. He's such a liar. All of these schedules encroach upon the family. I mean, again, I played at Florida State. I was a good player. Grew up playing church league. Went to some basketball camps, you know, in the summer. Whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I couldn't do that now. Oh, if I'm going to play college basketball now? Oh, five years old. I'm AAU, man. Five years old. I'm all over the country, brother. I'm playing tournament after tournament after tournament because I want to beat you and beat you. And you're doing the same thing. And my parents are sacrificing all of this time, energy and effort, and they're stiff arming the church. But here's what we say, I love this. Family first. Come on. Are you going to lie to yourself and your fam family first? You never say family first when you put God's kingdom last. You never say family first. Never. You never say family first when you're like, okay, church is second. No. Sorry. Sounds sexy. Doesn't work. Where in the Bible does it say family first? I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for someone to give me that verse. Sports. Are you kidding me? Will I watch games? Yes. Will you see me at the Cowboys game? Yes. Do I know some of the Cowboy players? Hashtag humbled. Yes. Okay. They come here, have, have some of the most popular ones ever come here? Yes. I'm not, don't, I hope you feel me, what I'm saying. I hope you feel me. Okay. Government, generally speaking, no, they're not supporting the family. Education, heck no. Music, for the most part, no. Television, no. Technology, no. Sports, hate to do it, but no. <sighs> that only leaves one entity. The church, the body of Christ, the family of God. It's the only entity 
that underscores and highlights the transcendent values that are to be lived out in the family circus. It's the church. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The church will last forever and ever. I'm talking about the church. We're talking the church. And I'm going to brag a little bit on Fellowship Church. Fellowship Church is a total God thing. I've had the opportunity to go to a lot of places around the world, again, by God's grace. I've seen a lot of churches, been to a lot of conferences. Week in and week out, I have never, ever seen a church like this one. Never have. We were talking before this service. I mean, every slice. Children's ministry. Student ministry. Creativity, worship ministry. The incredible volunteers. The spectacular hospitality. Awesome. Unbelievable. Thank you, God, for Fellowship Church. I mean, I love my church. And if I wasn't even pastor, I would go to church here. What are you doing with the church? I mean, we have this greatest show coming up. And you don't even have your kids registered? We put, I don't even want to know how much money, manpower. We have already a thousand, over a thousand volunteers for this. And, and, and. Let me just, and you're not going to lean into the, to, to the church? You're not going to find it anywhere else. It's not going to happen in the government or education or music or television or technology or sports. It's not going to happen. It happens here. Now, you guys all know Derek Bonneau. Do you not, Derek Bonneau? Yeah. Phenomenal leader, creator, songwriter, speaker, turned down a lucrative record deal when he was a teenager. Why? His brother, Kevin, who works in our technology and media area, came to Adventure Week, what we're doing right now, years ago, as a kid, became a follower of Christ, the entire Bono family come to Fellowship Church, Derek gives his heart to Christ, and look at the leadership and the influence of the Bono family of Derek Bono. Just download the app. Go to the app store. Type in Fellowship Church. Get. You got it. Sign up for it. Sign your kids up. It's only $25. Oh, don't, don't even try to look at me like that. When, don't even. Oh, a high school football game. Uh, uh. A college game, uh, you gotta make a fortune to go to the Cowboys game. People, it's hilarious. people are paying a quarter of a million dollars just to have a chance and a chance to get into something. I'm like, wow, what if the church was like that? Maybe I can talk to Jerry about that one day. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how he does it, do you? A couple of questions. 
Again, we're just having a conversation. When it comes to thing of, things of God, when it comes to the family circus, does this act, does this act reflect the tone and the tenor of Philippians chapter four, and let me give you the verse eight. Jesus is the ringmaster. You're the acts, marriage, family, career. It's not one, two, three, three, two, one. It's saying yes to the kingdom of God, putting the kingdom of God first. Let's read Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, get ready to read together, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, listen to me. Think about such things. So every act, we've got to submit it to this. Another suggestion, and you can ask yourself this question, but does, I bet this, leverage every aspect of the church. And I should say, are you leveraging every aspect of the church to underscore and highlight your family values? <laughs> um, Psalm 122, verse one, King James. Let's go back to the King James Version. You ready for this? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. I was what? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I love that. Now, in a message like this, I know you guys are having three reactions, because I have them too, right now, I know. I have hacked into you by the Holy Spirit of God. I know what you're thinking. You think I don't, but I do. Some of you, when I preach this sermon, some of you are sad. I mean, I get sad too. When I'm convicted of something, I get sad. Sad. The Bible calls it godly repentance. We don't talk about repentance anymore. We don't talk about sin anymore. Repentance is making an about face. I, I, seriously, seriously, I get, this, this message convicts me. I, I, I get sad. Wow, sad. Then my next response, and so is yours, I, I know. You get mad. Now, you gotta, you gotta be careful when you get mad because I sometimes will get mad at the wrong things and I'll miss the main thing. Don't get mad because I talked about Demi Lovato. Again, she's saying in her junior high ministry, so sad. Post Malone, oh yeah. Opportunity! Can they come back to the Lord? Oh yeah, no doubt. But they burn through decades and decades and decades. So, you'll get mad. You get mad at me. Oh, I can't believe he talked about the Cowboys. I can't believe he said that about Beyonce. I can't believe he said that about the government. Don't get mad at me. That's your problem, man. That's between you and God. Now, third response, this is a good one. This, this, is, this is why I love fellowship, man. Third response. Glad. See, because we go through this process, man, I'm glad. God, say it again, wants the best for every family here. He wants the best. Not second best, not decent. God wants the best. And so what I implore you to do, mom, dad, what I beg you to do, kids, follow the Lord now. You know what? I've grown up, as you've seen through this last series in the ministry, met a lot of people, and by God's grace, I've lived the Christian life since I became a believer at about eight years of age. Never went through the dope smoking, cocaine snorting, 
skirt chasing, crazy thing. Never did that. And quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of hearing people tell me that. Oh man, I live like hell. I was down the rabbit hole. I was doing this. I was hooked on meth. I was in heroin. I was this. I was that. I was a dancer. I was a prostitute. Oh, you know what? Great. Now you're a believer. Awesome. Phenomenal. But young people, read the writings of Solomon. Read the book of Ecclesiastes. Solomon, the richest guy ever lived, more so than Bezos. He said, remember the creator when you're young. And some people, some Christian people, and some of you are going to make this decision, and you'll make a stupid mistake, and I'm telling you right now. I'm going to tell you the mistake. Some of you will do it. In the crowd this side, some will, some will make this decision. I'll tell you what you do. You grew up here at Fellowship Church. Yeah, you know, like most involved people, you come once every six weeks. Those are our records. Once every six weeks. Hey, husbands, turn to your wife and say, hey, honey, I'm going to see you an hour once every six weeks. How's that gonna work for you? Yeah, you treat the bride of Christ that way. So, here's what's gonna happen. Some of you who show up once every six weeks, and you're not really serious, young people, about leaning into the things of God, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna graduate, pray a little prayer or whatever, go to camp maybe now and then. Your parents will send you off to college. Dr. Weirdbeard, Martha Marxist. And you'll say to yourself, you know, I lived, I lived, I lived a Christian life growing up, but I'm going to see how the other side lives. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go down the rabbit hole, baby. I can always come back. Are you kidding me? That's a lie from the pit of hell. I know too many people. I know them. I know them. They've done the same thing. They walk down the rabbit hole, not to return. Yeah, maybe one in a thousand. It ain't gonna happen. The devil is that powerful. So what are you going to do? And I'm sick and tired of guys who act like girls. You can wear your wife's jeans and you're not man enough to say, we are going to serve the Lord. I'm going to stand up for Jesus no matter what the cost. So, I'm just being a prophet right now because some of you will make that mistake. I know it sounds negative. Most, if I pray, this sermon will wake some of you up. Will not. I gotta do this last thing, then we're gonna go. One day Joshua stood before an entire nation of Israelites. Here's what he said, Joshua 24. Verse 15. Here's what Joshua said. This is bold, man. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. As for me, let's do it again. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. That's our prayer, man. And we have a church that will assist you and me. I mean, Lisa and I are four for four. Our kids, we're four for four. I'm bragging on God. We unashamedly relied on Fellowship Church to help rear our kids. And let me tell you this, it's more difficult to live with the Lord being a pastor's kid, especially a pastor's kid in a church like this, than to be kids of a teacher or a doctor or a lawyer. So don't sit there and go, oh yeah, they're preacher's kids. No. 
Sorry, no cigar. And I do smoke cigars now and then. I can't wait for the emails and blogs on that one. But the Bible says make a burnt offering before the Lord, why not? So. But, 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 yeah, we are, yeah, we're four for four. Are our kids perfect? No. Am I perfect? You know I'm not. At least they're perfect? No. We have a perfect marriage? No. Perfect house? No. Perfect circus? No. Perfect future? In, I mean, God's economy is, but not, we're not perfect. We're four for four. And it's very simple. I don't want to take something simple and make it complex. Too many people do that. I don't want to take something complex and make it simple. It's very simple. Lean in to the church. I saw a video this past week of some old footage of some families we interviewed back in the 90s. I'm not a crier. I started crying on, on a, one of these videos. But the others, I was like, man, that's, that's amazing. Because, wow, I saw some families and they've been living the life and they've been living the life for a long, long time. And I was like, wow, awesome. They, through thick and thin, they leaned into the church had their kids up here and involved, made the hard decisions in some areas. Amazing. There was one family that a lot of us put a lot of work into. And, whew, hard. They sat right where you're sitting. I mean, they were so attractive, I'd be like, I'm talking about me. I want to be them. I want to look like that. I want to have that money. I'm, I'm be, just take the gloves off, baby. I did that, that. Anyone here would go, yeah, I want, I, want, I, want, I want to be that. Be them. They were involved in the church at the time, loved God, had their children up here, but I watched them refuse coaching. I watched them refuse being challenged. I watched them slowly begin to take that mic, give it to that wretched ringmaster. Didn't happen overnight. Started looking at that rabbit hole, man. It was almost 20 years ago, today. And I was like, Lord, they were right here. One of the great churches anywhere. And they blew it. Don't blow it. Lean into the things of God. Commit. Just commit to going to church for the next six weeks. If it doesn't change your life, go to another church. Sign up for this Adventure Week thing. And I'm telling you, God will do amazing things in your family circus. Let's pray. Lord, I know we've gone over time, way over time, but sometimes... That happens. You're the author of time. And I know that you forgot more about time than we'll ever know, but the time is now for many people to step over the line and receive Christ. The Bible says today is your day of salvation. How do you become a Christian? Here's how you become a Christian. You simply say, okay, Jesus, I've been running the show. And it's, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I've been running the show, and I admit to you that I've been running the show. I've been doing things my own way, and just say this right now. I, I put the cards on the table. I, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again. I turn from my sins. Just say that. I turn from my sins and turn to you, Jesus. I give you my life. You be the ringmaster. Here's the mic, the jacket, the hat. You take, you take control of my life. If you said that, it's the best thing you'll ever do. Maybe you're way up in the balcony, you said that. 
Maybe you're in Prosper or Salina and you said that. Maybe you're at Alasso Ranch and you said that. Maybe you're in downtown Dallas and you said that. Maybe you're in Fort Worth and you said that. That's the best thing you'll ever do. Others of us here need to say what Joshua said. As for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. I'm talking to young people. I'm talking to students. I'm, I'm talking to you individually and collectively. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for your saving power. We thank you for your purpose and plan. We thank you for the family and we thank you for the church and may we make a major impact in our area of the world. Whether it be government or technology or education or sports or music or television, may we make that impact. Father, we thank you. We ask all these things. In Christ's name, and everybody said, amen, amen.